Hello, my name is Andrew Morgan Smith, and I'm here to talk to you today about why you're probably overusing Legato and maybe try using some of those other patches. Uh, don't worry, I'm actually talking to myself. Uh, maybe even as recently as six months ago. So um, let's get into it. So here's a track I composed for a friend of mine for his library, his sample library called uh, Feedback Drones. So if you want, I made another video talking about the elements in the synth side of this, but if you want to go watch that video, I'll link it in the description. Um, but I'm just gonna play through this and we're gonna talk about maybe why you should try and use other things besides Legato. a fun little track um but believe it or not i mean i assume you can believe this because it's what we're talking about most of this stuff is not legato i mean there's very little legato i think there literally is one legato patch in this whole experience um so something i just kind of realized i i stand corrected there's like four legato patches so obviously here um yeah and i'm not using i i hit a bunch of stuff in my temple that i wasn't using um, you know, this is every patch being used on this, and I can go through each thing. Um, but we're, I'm really wanting to talk about, you know, like here, we're using the legato patch on here to basically do the um, the low step down. And just so you know, this is CC1, this is CC11. Right? Um, but it's not doing anything too crazy, right? Like, I'm using, I'm using legato patches in like basically a sustains it's not right but i'm i'm doubling it with the shorts from other libraries so the low strings here are all the low strings for this passage right So what I'm driving at on this especially is that so many times I would find myself using legato whenever I shouldn't be. Like it, as a wind player, if you're a wind player, you might realize this as, as I, I'm a saxophone player by training. Um, you realize, man, I don't, I use legato, but it's in very specific situations. It's not just legato or shorts, right? Um, there's all kinds of lengths. And I think that that's something I kind of realized, um, I don't know probably later than I needed to. Uh, and I said to myself, well, why am I not using some sustain patches? Now, I, that kind of really comes into play in the brass section. Um, so this is a shorts patch where I'm just running it on the longer setting. Um, and it's something that it's really hard. You mean, you wouldn't be able to attain this. If you wanted to do a little more legato, you could always double it in like a legato line. You could double this with legatos. But I find a lot of times lately, I'm not doing that. I'm like a lot of times, you know, here's um, a lot of times I find that I'm doing like here's here is a longs patch. But it's, you know, it's it's not it's just being used as a sustain. Why am I tripping over my words? Not enough sleep. So, and, and in the mix, you kind of lose that they're separated. So if I was orchestrating it, 
I might ask my orchestrator to connect those, but man, it's just... And I've made, this is all, this is all legato patch, but I've made it into doing um, like basically marcato parts, right? So in context. <laughs> So something just to think about as we're doing this, right? So I can tell you what each thing is. This is um, Synchron Brass, which I've been really happy with lately. Uh, I'm using Abbey Road trumpets and um, musical sampling orb, orb trumpets, which I've really liked. Sounds good to me. Uh, gives it that nice, like, fanfare-y... Uh, fanfare trumpet part. To me. Uh, and then I'm using the uh, Abbey Road One Studio, uh, not Abbey Road Studio, Abbey Road One Low Brass, uh, as well as um, the Synchron Brass Low Brass, and these are. This is all. I'll just. I'll just do all the low brass here. This is Cage. Uh, Adia's Cage Brass that I use. I like their shorts a lot <laughs> to do stuff with. Um. So like this is the long. So, I mean, that's all, um, you know, not a sing. It just, there, there's something to be said about the character of a line, right? So, you think of any of these John Williams lines, um, the, these bombastic brass lines. They just have these great, this great character. And it's, part of it is that separation that creates it. And I think we have, you know, too many, too many times it's easy for us to, to forget that if we're going... Right versus or it just feels it just has a different feeling. Each thing has a different feeling. So we should definitely be thinking more about what when and where we're using legatos. Also, just as a quick like I mean the woodwinds are so are so minimal in this. There's not even there's no legato patches in this. I mean that's just Abbey Road, um Abbey Road. Albion three. <clears throat> I, I like to use the Albion stuff because it already feels like it's in place. And this, none of this is legato and it sounds great in context, right? It's doubling all the string runs. <laughs> So now we talk strings for a minute. So here is one of the the couple legato in the strings that I'm using, and I'm using it as uh, you know. Here is the it's this is uh, Spitfire chamber strings, and this is um, the orchestral tools run transitions. Uh, and I guess that's out of range of that. So that's obviously just copy and pasted. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> um, but you can, it's so quiet. I mean, I don't even know if you'll hear that in the video. Um, so basically something I'm trying to do with runs more and more is uh, runs are often just so clean in samples because they're just, it's just too clean. Like if, I mean, it's like, it's just, I don't know. It just, it sounds so synthetic. So a lot of times what I'm doing in my, runs is I'm adding in elements that'll make it more blurred. So in this case, this is Abbey Road 1 uh, high strings. Uh, I have the symph uh, oh my gosh, man, I'm so tired. Spitfire chamber strings here, and then the um, <clears throat> the run transitions, right? And I'll talk about this in a second. 
right? But I have another trick that I use, which is I add in um, Strezov, yeah, Strezov. I always reverse the Z and the V. Strezov samplings, a flata string, um, avant-garde string shorts, which is like generally they're supposed to be like kind of effect string shorts, but I really like to do this trick where I add them in and then I like mix them to taste. So it's like very low velocity or I'll actually print them and then mix them in volume wise. But here they are with that run in it. Without. So for me, there's something to be said as a player when you're playing a part that just feels like you're holding on for dear life. Uh, and that's what I feel like I get whenever I put in these string parts, right? Like... <laughs> um, and uh, down here, it's Abbey Road, uh, low strings. This is the Abbey Road, Abbey Road Legendary Low Strings. Uh, I think this is all Abbey Road on the low end of the strings on this one. I don't think it's anything else. <clears throat> we played that for you earlier. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the walkthrough. And then I, I have the separate Feedback Drones video if you want to listen to that. But my general thought, my the whole the summation of this video, which could have been done in 10 seconds. Oh, and if you want to, like, this is Cineperk and uh, Abbey Road... Um, percussion. Um, the summation is think about what you're doing uh, with your legatos versus sustains, right? Like they are two separate articulations for a reason. And uh, it took me far too long to learn that. Well, I'm going to let you get back to writing as you should be already. Uh, and let me know if you have any more questions. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to make some more videos soon. I've just been unfortunately too busy. But uh, all right. Sounds great. Talk to you later.